Good morning, friends. OBE Journal 2017 Part. <laughs> when are we? Eight? <laughs> Gosh, I hope so. Um, seven or eight. I'll, uh, I'll check the numbers <laughs> properly later. Anyway, um, 5 a.m. Number of activities here. Um, uh, bouncing around from one to the other here, trying to tell you, trying to decide which one came first. You know, which came first, the chicken or the egg, you know? The retrieval or the celebration or the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> interaction with the nature spirits in the garden. Um, I get the feeling we've been splitting up, as I hinted uh, or mentioned or threatened uh, a couple of episodes ago. Um, it's... Uh, always possible that one can be more than one as one travels in spirits. And I've, myself, Gordon, uh, has had this experience years ago and I hinted at that, that it might return. And um, oh, it puzzled me many years ago, uh, 10, 12 years ago in more adventures in eternity, I did get settled with it eventually. And um, it would seem that higher self, the monadic consciousness that creates the or projects, if you like, the uh, small essence of itself that uh, becomes a, a sentient entity on the physical plane, usually of, usually but not always, of uh, human consciousness, um, sometimes animal consciousness, sometimes uh, uh, nature consciousness, as in the uh, consciousness of a river, or the consciousness of a, hmm, small valley, uh, uh, mountains, mountain ranges. Um, but uh, in the stage of evolution that we're at, and that's my assessment, of course, it's mostly human. We've done all the nature spirit, well, not nature spirits, as in elves, fairies, gnomes, uh, devas, but the, the embodiment of natural... Uh, uh, the forms of nature. Um, and it's, it's, how would I say, it could quite often be temporary. It doesn't have to be, you know, when you're talking rivers and mountains, lifetimes is a whole other, you know, a whole other story. It's not a, a be born and, uh, uh, you know, grow, decay, die situation. And, um, but there is uh, plenty of evidence to suggest that we have as uh, spiritual entities embodied certain natural features in the landscape and become at one with them for that experience. Um, we know what it's like if we dig far enough to be a uh, rock, uh, granite, or you know some other mineral. Uh, not to mention the, uh, the, uh, the various life forms at various levels of rivers. That's also quite possible. And it has uh, been experienced by many in their regressions. But uh, human consciousness is um, generally what we're experiencing here on the planet, you know, the, the high percentage thereof. And um, I think uh, when I referred to it as a head, you know, the four Gordons or something in the, in the, the, the book, More Adventures in Eternity. And um, my experience then, which isn't all encompassing in terms of there could be many variations upon it, um, that higher self had created other beings to match my incarnation for 
in the same timeline, shall we say. I was born in 1952, Gordon was born in 1952. And these beings were created around or slightly thereafter that birth date. And they are more essentially astral beings. Um, they are, you know, sort of permanent, semi-permanent, if you like. They, they, they are experiencing an astral lifetime. And they are uh, karmically and energetically connected to me although they're not the product of me or the projection of me when I project it's kind of who you who you've been listening to that's doing the projecting but these other four are uh, related to me and have uh, a natural life and uh, as, as you may have come across in, in various books or whatever uh, there are some beings some entities, some sentient entities that choose not to be on the physical plane and yet they are incarnate. They perhaps have had strongly negative experiences in past lives and think, oh, I don't want to do that again. And um, but, but they love being an individual sentient being with character and personality that lives on the astral plane for its existence and lives in whatever, a village, a city, um, a culture, astral plane cities do have cultures, just like physical plane cities have cultures. Um, they have immigrants and, and uh, people from other ethnicities living within the dominant culture, um, just like big cities all over the physical plane do. But they have identifying characteristics. And someone who wishes to live, I'll just give a very obvious example, astral plane uh, San Francisco or astral plane Paris and there are you know, astral plane versions of all the major places sometimes more than one quite often more than one and um, they will live in a predominantly sort of North American astral plane culture or a predominantly uh, you know French astral culture but as I say with other you know, ethnicities living there, just like physical plane. Um, just to give you some identifying characteristics there. And, um, and there are many types of astral beings, beings who are um, content to be humanoid for their existence, um, not particularly uh, trying on other, other uh, forms for example. And uh, they will, as I say, be humanoid. Uh, although there are other, you know, areas, many, many other areas where people are not necessarily, sentient beings are not necessarily humanoid. Although they may uh, use that form to make others comfortable. Just as uh, uh, the beings we think of as al visiting aliens um, will come to Earth and um, be... Uh, uh, for their purposes and their educative journeys as they visit us um, appear to be human because it suits their purposes the best. Others, of course, uh, as we know from the, the uh, contact literature, are uh, quite happy to appear as, you know, Pleiadians, uh, reptilians, greys, either out of uh, pride or not caring. Um, one way or the other. They've got an, an agenda and they're pursuing it and they don't care what they look like. Um, and if they, if they give us pause and uh, a little uh, like, ooh, uh, <laughs> they'll do so. On the astral plane where the majority of, you know, the many millions of dead live, um, there are uh, a number of uh, visiting alien entities who are living amongst us there. Just as they are here on the physical plane, as you will perhaps know from one report or another, or your own experience, um, they're here to gather the human experience and take it back at the end of uh, a prescribed incarnation, even though if they were created uh, you know, in a lab on a spaceship circling the planet, you know, the, the way that you've heard sperm and egg and all that, you know, 
sperm and egg in the lab. It's not that complicated, although they it took it took a few generations to get it right, as uh, Bashar has mentioned, amongst others. First uh, couple of generations were a little uh, weak and weedy, to say the least. And um, the later generations, as perhaps you know, are um, with us now and living amongst us, learning our human ways. And uh, some of the UFO researchers have uh, recently uh, put out books concerning these matters, um, two or three that I can think of. Some of them are afraid that, that the alien entities are uh, psychically more powerful and will take over government and bureaucratic structures eventually and run the show in, in a not too uh, pleasant manner. Not exactly slave drivers, but, you know, uh, running the show. Um, I, I suspect that is wrong. Um, they may have uh, strong psychic abilities now, but they will be diluted. And not only that, they will, uh, uh, the, because they have the, you know, uh, how shall I say, the DNA and the heart chakra that we have, and not that that's any kind of a guarantee of uh, saintliness, but it does uh, breed that, that, uh, that, that funny little thing called compassion, mercy, and sympathy. And um, they will uh, slowly increase in those values and those uh, energetic outputs and will not particularly wish to boss us around in later generations or even right now. So... Um, uh, that is my perception of the near future with the aliens visiting, the humanoid ones that have taken uh, a human form and are li living amongst us, getting assistance, as some of the books reveal, um, like how to act at, at uh, <laughs> knives and forks and how to act on dates and, uh, you know, all that sort of a thing. Um, they're learning and uh, they're awfully good at certain things, but they're uh, pretty weak at others. And... Um, Certainly, uh, looking around at the number of, say, autistic children in our society now, the increasing number, I don't think the uh, uh, the journey of the uh, you know smart but not too swift aliens in terms of you know human behavior and uh, and uh, credibility and uh, uh, you know. Uh, participating in the consensual reality with uh, love and compassion is, uh, is that much different than what I see with aut autism and the, the, the people, the souls who are, have taken on that journey and are, are having difficulty, you know, great challenges coping with um, mixing in society. I work with these people and uh, I, I see the, the tough times that they can have. Well, they're young, but they, they have autism. <laughs> So there are many uh, soul entities coming in to the consensus reality, either on the physical plane or the astral plane, um, interacting with the rest of us who are slightly more normal, <laughs> not completely, but slightly more, and uh, having challenges doing so. And uh, I don't think uh, the, the difference between the, uh, the psychically powerful aliens and the... Uh, not so uh, balanced and easygoing uh, autist, autistic uh, uh, beings, uh, if I can, I can maybe permitted to put that label on them for the sake of conversation. Um, the journey is similar, I think, but, you know, that's, that's just Gordon's point of view. And um, uh, we just learned, they learned to cope, we learned to cope, we learned to blend. We all learned to blend. Just in the same way that uh, uh, English-speaking Caucasians around where I live in the, the, the greater Toronto area, we've been learning to uh, blend and cope with many, many, many ethnicities that live here now from all over the world. And uh, I think we instinctively recognize, not just recently with the uh, civil wars and refugees, uh, that is a, a strong uh, element right now, we have quite a number of ref refugees here. Um, we've been learning this whole United Nations thing for the last, oh, I'd say 40, 50 years. 
Toronto was much, much less ethnically diverse when I arrived in 1968. And um, it's just like anywhere else now. Um, I mean, any big city anywhere. And um, it's a marvelous experiment. And I'm pleased to be uh, a very uh, small cog in a very large uh, uh, turning machine, as, as the city can be seen as sometimes. So, um, astral plane. Um, trying to draw some comparisons there. Multi, the multi ethnicities of astral plane cities versus, uh, you know, physical plane cities. Um, of course, they're all dead there. They're a lot happier, most of them. And um, they're not, they don't kind of struggle from day to day like we often do with uh, difficult situations, mass transit, takes hours to get to work. Um, trying to work out our budgets when money's tight. They don't have any of that sort of a thing. And they may remember having that, but they don't have it now. But there's still this uh, many souls living in proximity in astral cities. And as beautiful as most of them are, and they are architecturally quite marvelous. And um, I'm one of my weaknesses is my inability to describe them well. And I would refer you to uh, the works and videos, the videos particularly, of Jürgen Zhu, who uh, has, being such a fine, fine artist, has done some great paintings and animations too of what he sees and remembers from his astral plane visits. And the, it's, it's a classic case of a picture speaks a thousand words. Jürgen's pictures are so much more in detailed and inspiring than any jabber I'm going to give you about how marvelous the architecture is on the astral plane cities. So uh, as I say, uh, Z-I-E-W-E, -E, Jürgen, Z-I-E-W-E, -E. that's his name, and uh, check, Google that and you'll get all kinds of stuff. Um, sometimes they're just interviews and uh, uh, sometimes he's put on uh, because uh, he's technically uh, capable of all this sort of thing that I can't do, moving in the, the pictures. Uh, to, so you can see them, the paintings, and uh, meditate on them and uh, get the full vibe of uh, you know, landscape shots and um, garden shots and uh, uh, astral plane architecture stuff. Wonder wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, so... Uh, Right, let me just focus. Who was I yakking to? Um, sometimes the uh, alien entities visiting or living amongst us, not just on the physical plane, but the astral plane, are a little shy, and you can't always tell them because they're, they, do, they do a good imitation. They do a very good imitation. And... Um, uh, uh, I mean, that's that's what they're doing. They're trying to be human. They're trying very hard to be human. And uh, they see a lot of examples around them. And they think, well, there's no one way to do it. And they've got a, a character determined by their past soul activities in other forms and the, the whole blending, the DNA blending of their uh, lineage and ours. Because they are blends, right? Um, so they've got quite a bit to work with. And uh, they see a great bit of diversity around them. And they understand that there's no one way to be human. And uh, they're right, there isn't. Um, there are certain you know, norms and behavior patterns that we, we think are appropriate that they don't quite get. But they, 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 they will eventually. <laughs> Yeah, they will eventually. Um, and uh, uh, I, would say, I would say I would look forward to that time. I just know it's going to happen. Um, it's not, not a matter of anxiety or concern to me, um, although it is to some UFO researchers. Um, as as you, you will find out if you do a little research on YouTube. Um, but it's not of a concern to everybody. It's, you know, there are varied reactions. And um, uh, 
Okay, I get it. Now, I was introduced to uh, uh, a couple that... Uh, living in an astral uh, community that I, I regularly visit. Um, I mean, there's many that one can do do these regular visits as, as, as either you know from your own experience or you've heard or you've read or you've heard me talk about it. There's the whole travel time thing, you know, there's no getting on buses and waiting in lines. You're, you're just kind of there, automatic transfer, spend a few minutes hanging out, socializing, getting up on all the news and then you you know you leave these things are not um, hard to do they're you know hard to remember but they're not hard to do and um okay so it's these two astral beings um okay they're living in a small village um in uh, astral version of uh, southern england that's a place i'm quite familiar with for a variety of reasons my many incarnations in, as a brit and uh, my many visits in uh, during this Gordon's incarnation, partly to do with the uh, the uh, fulfillment of an ancient promise by the, you know in my opinion uh, Druids in ancient Britain uh, we, they realized there would be uh, or they were told or both there would be a time when signs and wonders from spirit would be needed to correct a drift towards uh, you know. Uh, stupid materialism i'm going to call it uh you know in the modern world and that of course is the crop circles and um i was a, was and am an active participant in that on one level of my being not on the level of being that gets up in an hour and goes to work but you know a, a, another spiritual level more refined and so are the devas and all that sort of thing so the, a lot of visitation over that um to astral plane england and um as I say, my psychic lineage is uh, strongly British, not completely. And uh, uh, so a lot of interaction there. So uh, uh, astral plane villages and small towns in southern England are, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> one of my regular neighborhoods. So, um, uh, and they're lovely spots, just like uh, if any have toured uh, southern England. Um, on holiday or whatever, the, the physical plane in itself is beautiful. Anywhere from, uh, you know, Gloucestershire to Kent, you know, just to mention but a few and not to boost one over the other. Um, it's kind of like wandering, some of it's like wandering through a Tolkien novel. It's quite marvelous. But anyway, um, uh, yes, I'm. I'm I was introduced to these uh, beings a while ago, and uh, th this past uh, night, very shortly uh, ago, I was w with them and um, uh, visited them in their home, and uh, fairly standard astral plane house in a village. Uh, they're like um, village homes in England, a little you know fancier, but not mansion-like by any means. Just um, a, a, a little more catering to one's personal desires and needs, you know, uh, without the, the, the necessity of saying, oh, geez, we can't afford that. You know, you get the best kind of tiles, the most beautiful kind of windows, you know, that sort of a thing. So it's luxury on a, on a, on a smaller scale, beautiful garden, you know. I mean, some people like to have a mansion, but the, the, not as many as you would think. And... Um, so um, these two are living, they're married, as far as I can tell, man and wife, <laughs> wife and man, and, um, but they're Pleiadians, and uh, they, they know it. And they, um, they are living here as humans. And they're telling me it's uh, a challenge, but an enjoyable challenge. Um, they bring with them uh, a lineage of much greater knowledge than the average human, strictly human being has. And they have to, in order to interact with us and live a human life, that has to be suppressed. 
and uh, they're telling me it's not unlike how an old soul living on earth an old soul in human terms you know many incarnations uh, will suppress greater knowledge in order to face certain challenges in his in their old soul life and uh, I think we spoke earlier of, of uh, the amount of soul wisdom that one decides to bring as one incarnates. Younger souls, we know from the research, seem to take a higher percentage, 40, 50 percent, sometimes even more, of their total overall soul wisdom with them into incarnation because they need it. They need it as a reservoir of intelligence and, uh, you know, um, wisdom. And older souls tend to take much less because the, the you know, 10, 15 percent, um, because they don't need it. So uh, their suppression of their greater wisdom, you know, sort of a cosmic level, understanding the Pleiadian history of the Pleiadian civilization and its position within the, the galactic neighborhood, the, uh, that sort of interaction of planetary cultures that uh, humans are only just entering now um, we're, you know, we're being allowed in as long as we don't bring any guns and knives, you know. Um, and uh, you'll be aware of that, of course. Um, so uh, th it's just, a, it's a learning process for them. It's a little frustrating because they're way smarter than uh, those around them. But it's, it doesn't help on their journey to act out that superiority. Um, they are learning humility, amongst other things. And they're learning to get along with their fellow man. And they realize that being on the astral plane, the getting along thing's not nearly as hard and challenging as it is here on the physical plane. And they, they're they telling me that um, they do visit the physical plane as, a, well, you know, sort of what we would think of as... Uh, High, highly functioning ghosts to uh, interact uh, as much as they can um, with uh, humans on that level. Although the, the, they're, they're saying there is definitely a limitation there because most people are not going to recognize them at all. But they do uh, pick up aspects of physical plane uh, life and culture and uh, can examine uh, energetically the various life forms on the physical plane, and that includes, you know, um, animals, birds, fish, insects, etc., 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 and um, uh, definitely a learning process there, and um, which they're telling me is uh, psychically, energetically transferred to <laughs> what they're going to call home base um, for you know archives of data. You know, there's a whole scientific uh, element here where data is accumulated and stored. And uh, whether you wish to take an interest in that or not, I mean, do you take interest in you know, the accumulation of uh, medical scientific data right now here on Earth? I mean, one reads reports in the papers and one picks up opinions. But uh, how much time do we have to accumulate the data in our own uh, uh, lives day to day? Um, one has to have a life dedicated to that sort of thing, I should think. And their life is dedicated to this. And um, they're telling me um, there is a lot of fun to be had in learning to be human. They say it's not all an uphill track. It's not all challenges and frustrations and oh dear, these people are strange, sort of um, situations. As they, as they uh, may move along their path, they learn to uh, enjoy every moment as it, uh, as it unfolds. A very philosophical position. I, would, I must say I admire that. Well, although, again, all this uh, you know, astral plane stuff is a lot easier than physical plane stuff. There's no, uh, there's no getting around it. But it is, it is more than dipping your toes in the, in the water of uh, humanoid, uh, I shouldn't say humanoid, human evolution. 
And uh, it's, it's much more than a start. I could say it's a start, but it's more than that. And um, uh, they don't jabber on to other people about, you know, marvelous spaceships that float silently through the galaxy and, and, and are like, like small planets in themselves, as the motherships are. Um, uh, they will talk about it if people ask, but um, they don't go around blabbing about it. Uh, just as, a, you know, same on a physical plane here. The, uh, <laughs> uh, there are a few people have written about this, as you, as you perhaps know, and there are uh, motherships that are that large, that contain an entire societies in miniature and, you know, various landscapes and, um, you know, small, uh, you know, a mothership that's three miles long and it's not actually vibrating in our level and we can't actually see it, but it's there. Um, can have uh, all the equipment necessary to function that ship, um, all the insider stuff, you know, the, um, and, you know, uh, uh, kitchens and dwellings and gardens and swimming pools and, you know, whatever they need. It's there because it is miles long. And, um, but uh, just a, a quick reference there for those of you that might not know that. Um, I have been on them myself, but my memory is not strong. Um, and, I, you know, I, I certainly read the books by others that have, uh, or chapters in books that have done this, uh, who remember it better. And uh, I, I find that the uh, remember, remembering stuff that you do out of body, as I've said to many of you over the years, that's the challenge. Not, not doing it's not the big deal. It's remembering that you've done it. And um, there's a lot to remember, and just in the sense of um, just as your, your past uh, uh, human incarnations, there's a lot to remember. I've written at least three, well, at least two anyway. Your history is one of them. Um, in, you know, encounters with past selves and uh, how one interacts with them and how one blends with their energies and they blend with yours, um, you know. And I, when I look at those books now, I see that they're, they're a step forward for sure, but it's not certainly not the whole story. And um, so there's vast amounts of stuff to remember. And we all only have certain time, time sequences in our, in our daily cycles to do so. So, um, you know, keep at it, <laughs> don't give up. And there's a lot, a lot to find, a lot to uncover as we uh, return to our uh, original state of, uh, you know, divine consciousness that we started with. Um, there's a lot. And uh, the uh, interactions with uh, quote-unquote alien entities visiting uh, is part of it. And it's up to all of us to, to decide how important a part of it it is. And... Um, uh, I leave that up to you. I'm not going to lay down any kind of laws or guidelines or anything like that. Um, pointless as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we all have our own take on it. And uh, uh, it's just like how much time do you want to spend interacting and learning the cultures of other um, uh, ethnicities here on your physical plane life? Um, some, t some people go to language classes you know, learn Spanish, learn German, learn Mandarin, etc., etc., and um, participate in the culture to some degree. Go to uh, uh, events that are culturally focused or from those cultures and participate and learn. And um, myself, I tend to learn from music a lot. I'm, I'm very interested in the, uh, the musics of other cultures, and. Uh, world music culture now is very active, especially if you're online. You can access all sorts of things. And um, uh, uh, that's how I dip my toes into it. And we all do it to some degree or another, whether you're just eating Chinese food at lunch or, um, you know, having a falafel late in the afternoon at a Lebanese takeaway. You know, and, and listening to people uh, chatter in Arabic around you, as I, I've done from time to time. And um, 
and you can that's one level of it and you can go beyond that and in your astral plane journeys those of you who are uh, taking on that adventure consciously or trying to bring it to consciousness you can dip your toes that way too you can uh, if you, you can, if if you're saying to to yourself well you know when, when i do these lucid dreams or astral travels how do i find these people well ask your guides to take you to them as uh, as many of you know your guides will guide uh, to you to any number of situations if you so ask uh, they won't interfere but um they will help out if asked and uh, i think you all know that but that's just another thing that they will help out on uh, there's never this sense of well, oh no you can't do that <laughs> sorry no we can't help out on that well i guess that is if you want to do something violent uh, then you know, if you're, you're doing that sort of a thing like jihadists you will attract another type of guide uh, who believes in the uh, sanctity of your motivations and uh, that's usually uh, another jihadist that has died and uh, has figured out what something of what to do and um, and it's, uh, to extend that metaphor, it's the same with people that are engaged, seriously engaged in criminal activity. Um, they will attract guides that are often dead versions of who they are, who want to play the, continue to play the game and think it's quite appropriate and righteous to, to, to play the game. And um, uh, because they see the world as terminally corrupted and uh, they're young souls and they tend to feel that well, look at all those other guys getting the bigger piece of the pie. Why shouldn't we? You know, we're we're the we're the uh, you know they see themselves as the, the slave culture, the the uh, the subordinate culture, and they look at uh, let, let t to give a, a cliche rich white people, and they say, well, look at them, colonialism and empire building and you know crooked banking and yada yada yada. That's made them what they are, so why don't we do the same thing, you know? And a uh, pretty simple uh, way of looking at the world, but that's what they do. And um, I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying that's the way it is. And uh, you either play that game or you don't. And when you're playing that game, you attract guides, um, not guides that are sort of, you know, trying to move you on to a greater knowledge, understanding, empathy, love, etc., you attract other guides that think it's highly appropriate that you accumulate your own little empire through ruthless criminal activity, you know. Um, so uh, just another, you know, small comparison there that I think is valid and appropriate. Um, so, uh, you know, feel free to uh, interact with alien entities that are living human lives in the current uh, time frame and your guides will guide you to that if you so wish just as they will well uh, i don't will guides take you to alien uh, spaceships they might they might not because the the, the spaceships especially the ones that are, that are actively doing work um they're very focused they don't like to be disturbed uh, that's my experience they're like what are you doing here and why are you bothering us we've got things to do buzz off I've experienced that from a number, especially the ones engaged in the uh, the uh, abduction programs, uh, the earlier phases, 30 and 40 years ago. They had the attitude of, uh, we don't have to justify ourselves to you. We're ent entirely entitled to do what we're doing. And um, your complaints are noted, but not taken seriously. And then they just walk off. And because um, I would project onto... Uh, um, alien spaceships and uh, with a grievance you know I felt that the uh, abduction program was entirely inappropriate and people did not have to be traumatized as they were they're not so much traumatized now I don't seem to hear of that so much but 30 and 40 years ago people were terribly traumatized and um, were very ter very uh, you know um, couldn't cope with their lives because of the regular abductions and doctors wouldn't believe them, and psych most psychiatrists wouldn't either. They had to find their way to abduction researchers, which uh, there wasn't that many, and it took a long while. Uh, it's a little better now, and they're a little better adjusted because they've been uh, being abducted so long they're used to it now. 
and they, uh, they have a greater understanding of what the, the whole the whole program. So um, uh, I, I realize that's a fairly detailed, complex sort of uh, um, series of statements there, but um, I think you can pick your little bits of wisdom out of that as, as you so wish. Um, and I, I, I remember thinking at the time that the, the, the uh, snotty sort of we don't have to uh, uh, talk to you sort of uh, attitude that I was getting from those beings many years ago was, was very similar to our, the people from our intelligence agencies, uh, whether they be American, British, whatever, uh, French or any, you know, any, any of them that were in on the game, which, some, which they were. And um, the game of deception. The, the, they had a sense of entitlement and living above the law, uh, uh, the law of the land, the law of morality, the law of uh, treating your fellow human beings with dignity and respect. They all felt they were above that. So, um, um, hey, I'm special. I can do what I want. Um, so the aliens were a bit like that to me. And I didn't. I did did make the comparison, and a lot of them still are. Um, but you know, let's face it, a lot of humans are that way too. So um, we see behavior patterns repeated all over, and um, regardless of uh, uh, DNA history or uh, form of being, behavior patterns are, as, as I, I, far as I can tell, universal. And uh, I guess we could enumerate the behavior patterns. That's a bit like psychology in a way, isn't it? Um, just kind of put them down on a page, you know, numbers one through 20. Um, and uh, is, is it worth doing that? Perhaps it is for textbooks. And uh, we'll get to that um, another time. And uh, as of uh, right now, I think it's time to be uh, going on. And uh, thank you for uh, listening, and I hope this has been uh, illuminating for you. And um, we'll uh, talk again extremely soon.